church of that name. <laughs> you are welcome again back to church. Um, I always think so we are on our feet as we begin to worship him the Lord. And I bless him in holy name. I worship him for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. With loving kindness, the Bible says we are good every morning. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. I want to express to our soul, our mind, our spirit, even our flesh, and put them all together, focused on Jesus right now. I want us to bless the name of the Lord. I want them to know that, yes, there is a people here that are worshiping him. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor because you alone deserve our praise. You alone deserve our worship. Be thou exalted, Lord. Lord, we thank you because you are the reason why we live. We thank you because it is you that uh, that that's given us life. You are life yourself. The Bible says that in him was life. And this life is the light of men. Lord, we thank you. We worship you because we do not lack light. Because you are the light that gives light to us. Be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou magnified in the name of Jesus. The Bible says also that whoever follows him will not stumble. Lord, we thank you because we have not stumbled. We thank you for calling us to yourself. We thank you for giving us shelter in you. We thank you for giving us covering in you. Indeed, the Lord is our salvation. Indeed, the Lord is our rock and our refuge and our fortress. Yes, who, if the Lord be for us, what and who can be against us? Lord, we thank you. We adore you because we are standing today all because of your mercy, all because of your grace and your love. Your love indeed is constant and everlasting upon our lives, Lord. Father, this is all saying thank you. This is us presenting our bodies as living sacrifice uh, to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, the King of glory. Yes, we worship you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the Lord of Lord, mighty in battle, the king of glory, the sovereign king himself, the king of righteousness, the king of Israel. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you honor. Be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou magnified in the name of Jesus. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be thou exalted, Oh, Lord, he magnified. 
glorified you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy jesus christ you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy lord you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy jehovah you are worthy to be glorified only in this kingdom that the deity that is worshipped even calls his worshippers to even become kings and priests. Not just priests. It is only in this New Testament, this new dispensation, by reason of the blood of Jesus, the high priest himself, that we are made both kings and priests unto our God. I want us to just bless the Father that privilege to be both kings and priests. In the Old Testament, it is separated. In fact, when a king wants to uh, do the work of a priest, time he was punished for it severely. But Lord, how we can approach the throne as priests, and the Lord has made us even as kings unto himself. Lord, we thank you for this privilege. Be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou magnified in the name of Jesus. As kings and as priests, I want us to lift up our voice in worship things in the name of Jesus Lord we worship you we give you praise we give you honor we say you are worthy of our praise you alone are worthy you alone are worthy there is no one like you Jesus is the same yesterday and forevermore in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father we worship you we give you praise in the name of jesus let your glory fill this place let your glory fill us this evening let your presence fill this temple in the name of jesus when i say temple it is first your body it is first the temple of your body the lord fills this temple and even this congregation as a whole in the name of Jesus Lord we say we crave your presence your awesome presence in this place in the name of Jesus that song says that our eyes are fixed on him our eyes are on him let's begin to make our eyes to be on him right now our hearts to be on him alone right now forget about yourself and put all attention on him alone in the name of Jesus for he is the author and the finisher of our faith uh, in the name of Jesus. Let Jesus be lifted high upon every mind in this place. Uh, let Jesus be above every situation running through the minds of men in this place, even at this moment. Uh, in the name of Jesus, lift high lifted up jesus speaking i will draw men to myself in the name of jesus jesus be lifted up in this place uh, in my mind be lifted up in my heart be lifted up in the name of jesus make my heart your throne this evening uh, holy spirit of god you are welcome in this place this evening in the mighty name of jesus be comfortable in our midst and do what only you can do in the name of jesus my in the name of Jesus, do the work of sanctification, do the work of the deliverance, making us to become more like Christ in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you know and you are sure that it 
the veil has been torn and therefore you can enter and obtain mercy and approach the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace. I want you to in that sense begin to approach that throne right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, I believe the veil is torn and therefore there is direct access. There is invitation for prayer in the name of Jesus. There is invitation for communion in the mighty name of Jesus. This evening the veil is torn on again. We are welcoming, we are approaching the throne of grace in the mighty name of Jesus. We are invited to commune in the mighty name of Jesus and therefore our response is yes Lord, in the name of Jesus. There is no limitation anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to speak in the spirit right now that there is no limitation for you this evening in the mighty name of Jesus the torn, the veil is torn in the mighty name of Jesus this evening there shall be migration from outer court into the inner court even into the most holy place in the name of Jesus I want us to give ourselves to the spirit of God to take us on this migration this evening in the mighty name of Jesus if you are already in the holy place, receive grace to stay there. In the Bible says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, there shall be migration this evening and grace to stay in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I want us to pray that in this house, the most holy place of the most high will not be a strength thing for us anymore. In the name of Jesus, it will not be a strength thing for us. It will be familiar with it in the mighty name of Jesus that when it is mentioned, we know what it means because we are there. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is an atmosphere of the outer, outer court. There is an atmosphere of the inner court. And there is a greater atmosphere in the most holy place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes all you need to do is just to migrate. And when you migrate, you change atmosphere. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we receive the power. We receive the grace to stay and dwell. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we receive the enablement to migrate in the mighty name of Jesus that as many that are at the outer court in the name of Jesus the Lord is sounding a call right now come 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 unto me and our response this evening is yes Lord in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus as many that are complacent being in the inner court being in the outer court Lord we pray that we are unsatisfied and we move forward. We press ahead to see and experience a dimension that we have never experienced in you before. In the mighty name of Jesus in this house, Lord, we want to be diffusing the fragrance the fragrance of your atmosphere of your glory, of your light. In the mighty name of Jesus, we refuse to stay. We refuse to stay stay. We refuse to stay with my greater and we press on in the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse to look back in the name of Jesus. We refuse to release our hand from the plow in the name of Jesus. We put on it. We, we, it sticks there in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we are praying. In Jesus name we are praying. I want us to open our Bibles to the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 2. Okay, I quickly read from here. The Bible says, Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. The reason why this king 
did what was right in the sight of the Lord is because there is a priest. Because there is a priest. So, to, to, to engage righteousness, to, to, to do right things, there is a place of priesthood to do righteousness. I want us to pray that in this house, in this house, the Lord will make us priests that, that provide a righteous atmosphere. A right, that when people come to you, they experience righteousness because you are diffusing it. Your atmosphere is righteousness. Don't, someone cannot come near you in, within your sphere and do unrighteousness. I want us to, this king was able to do the right thing because there was priesthood. I want us to pray that the Lord, we, we, we equip our priesthood to be able to provide righteous atmosphere in wherever we find ourselves at home, at work, in church, everywhere we find ourselves, that the Lord will give us the enablement, the grace in the name of Jesus, the anointing. The Bible makes us to understand that priests are anointed for certain things. I want us to pray for that anointing this evening. The anointing to provide, the making that provide a righteous atmosphere in the mighty name of Jesus upon each and every Every person, every member in this house, Lord, we pray that you will make us priests in the name of Jesus that do not condole unrighteousness, that do not condole lasciviousness and lawlessness. In this house, we are we are we are we are people of righteousness, we are slave unto righteousness and not wickedness. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord we energize our priesthood to say no and cancel every unrighteousness within our sphere in the mighty name of Jesus in the spirit of God we ask oh Lord that you kindle the fire of our priesthood in this house in the name of Jesus to say no to every unrighteousness in the mighty in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, every altar of priesthood in this house, in the name of Jesus, the fire is kindled tonight, in the name of Jesus, we are energized of the spirit of God, our priesthood is energized, in the name of Jesus, to create atmosphere of righteousness wherever we find ourselves, in the mighty name of Jesus, mazei in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, when you see children of certain homes behaving anyhow, perhaps it's the priesthood of that house that is missing, that is not positioned rightly. I want us to pray that Lord, even in our homes, in the name of Jesus, the Lord energizes our priesthood. In the name of Jesus, many people don't even do devotions in their homes anymore. The fire is dead completely. There is a kindling this evening in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, in this house, the fire of priesthood in our homes, in the name of Jesus, is rekindled in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray by your spirit you will energize our priesthood in every house in the name of Jesus. In every home in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray this evening that Lord, you will energize our priesthood in the name of Jesus. I hear the spirit of God says, be the priest, the priest of your own life. Be the priest of your own life first in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive grace to be the right priest 
priest of my own life, first of all, in the mighty name of Jesus. In this house, we take responsibility in the mighty name of Jesus, of the priesthood, even over our own life, before over any home, before over any, any gathering, in the mighty name of Jesus. My Bralino said to a brilliant as a daily, Latizia and Akeledos, Yam Breleno, Rike Isia Lianda Sositalia, in the mighty name of Jesus, Masike Tailian as a toy palandaya, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you give us grace in the name of Jesus to be responsible in our priesthood over even our own life, first of all, in the name of Jesus. Maizia Lianda Ketuzia and Natalia, in any way. Anyone has been living recklessly in the mighty name of Jesus, abandoning the priesthood, the, the work of priesthood over his or our own life in this house. Lord, there is a sounding of reminder in the name of Jesus, a sounding of remembrance in the name of Jesus, a reminder in the spirit in the name of Jesus. The spirit of God begins to quicken the spirit of men in this house unto priesthood, responsible priesthood in the mighty name of Jesus, Mazika Taparia Liana Zenei Ketolia, in the name of Jesus, thank you, everlasting Father. We worship you, we give you praise. Yes, 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 you are bringing alive in the name of Jesus, the priesthood in every home and even over every life in this assembly. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I want to read from Leviticus chapter 14. Verse 48. Leviticus chapter 14, verse 48. We are praying about priesthood this evening. The Lord has made us kings and priests unto himself. I read from here. Leviticus chapter 14, verse 48. But if the priest comes in and examines it, and indeed the plague has not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean. Because the plague is healed. I want us to give attention to the word examine. The priest, they do what? They examine. In a way, they legislate and they judge. I want us to pray. One, one thing, this is one thing priests do in, in, in their work, as, uh, in, 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 in their priesthood. This, I want us to pray for discernment for righteous judgment. Discernment for righteous judgment. Because whatever the Bible says, they, it says that whatever the priest says, this it is clean. It is clean. Even Jesus, remember when he healed that leper, he asked him to go to the priest. It is the priest that will declare such person clean or unclean. I want us to pray for ourselves that Lord, I receive grace. For discernment, for righteous judgment in the name of Jesus. Over my life first, I am able to discern righteousness in the name of Jesus. I am able to perceive your will in the name of Jesus. Over your life first of all, one mistake can turn a lot of things around. And therefore we need the grace to discern to discern righteously over our lives uh, in the name of Jesus. Lord, this evening, let there be an anointing. Let there be an anointing for righteous judgment, even in my priesthood, in the name of Jesus. In this house, our priesthood will not lack righteous judgment. Uh, we are able to judge righteously in the mighty name of Jesus. You have opportunities for more than one job, and you are confused. Uh, which one is which? Like, by the grace and by the uh, by the power of discernment uh, for righteous judgment, you are able to know and discern and perceive the will of God that this is the one for me and this one is not for me in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, life is all about making choices. Each of us is, is 
choice is an integral sum of every choice that we have made in the past. Lord, we ask, oh Lord, from now on, we receive grace for discerning righteous good judgment. In the mighty name of Jesus, Mali Prasianda Ketosi and Natalia, our priesthood as individuals and even as a congregation, as an assembly in this place, we, we, we pray that our priesthood will not lack righteous judgment. In the mighty name of Jesus, Malemosi and Patili and whatever we say that it is, it is. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, that whatever, and I will give you keys of the kingdom of God, that whatever you bind on earth, that is a priest. We will bound in heaven, and whatever you prohibit on earth shall be prohibited in heaven. I want us to be asking for those keys right now. The keys that enabled our priesthood for righteous judgment. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, give them to us. We are ready to receive them. In the mighty name of Jesus, as many as received him, I hear in my spirit that Jesus himself is the first key. Jesus himself is the first key. I receive Jesus into every part of my life. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, I receive you. In the name of Jesus. This one is not about giving your life to him. This is about having him. In the name of Jesus. Real, real. Having him really in your life. That there is no decision that you want to make that Jesus will not be involved in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you are that first key. The, uh, you are that first key and I receive you into my spirit, into every part of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. From now, the Holy Ghost is not passive in the, in the lives of any member of this house. In the name of Jesus, we begin to actively commune with him, having a walk with him. Indeed, in the name of Jesus, my in the mighty name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost is not passive in my life. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost is not passive in my home. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace for discerning righteous judgment. In the mighty name of Jesus, that whatever I bind is bound in heaven. Whatever I prohibit is prohibited in heaven. In the mighty name of of Jesus, my brilliant old Setoisi and Aketalia. Let's begin to align our heart, our mind, to the precepts of the of the of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost will not be going right, and I will be going left. No, in the name of Jesus, in this house we receive grace for precision in leading, in leading, being led by the Spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, precision. In the mighty name of Jesus, in being led by the Spirit of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. As many as received him, he has given the power, the right to become sons of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I receive grace for righteous judgment, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Over this, over my life, over my home, over my marriage, over my job, over my ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My brother in the name of Jesus Lord we pray that you will help us in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we are praying in Jesus name we are praying the Bible says that it is by their fruit that we shall know them and the fruit we should bear as priests are the fruit of the Holy Spirit in love I want us to pray for every member of this assembly that in any way we are stagnant in love, in peace, in joy, in meekness. The, 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 the stage you are in the class of love last year is still where you are today. Each virtue of, 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 the, of the, each, each virtue of fruit of the spirit, there are classes for them. The way you used to love last year should not be the same. The way you understand and you are knowledgeable about the love of Christ last year should not be the same today. They are not like the gift of the spirit. They are, we grow in them. I want us to pray that Lord will receive grace to grow in, in the fruit of the spirit, in love, in peace, in joy, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because that it is by their fruit. It is by our fruit. By this fruit that will be known in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I receive grace to grow 
in the name of Jesus. In any way anybody is stagnant in the in growing the fruit of the spirit in this house. Lord, we pray in meekness, in self-control, in the mighty name of Jesus. Some people will even tell you, I am, I am this. That's how I am. You are just telling the, oh, the Holy Ghost that you cannot go beyond this level. Lord, we pray that such spirits will renounce in this house. Uh, that the negate growth in the, in, in the fruit of the spirit uh, will renounce in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, our priesthood will not lack fruit. In the name of Jesus. The fruit of the spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask oh Lord, that we grow in love. We grow in peace. We grow in joy. We grow in meekness. We grow in patience. We grow in long suffering. We grow in faith. We grow in in in, in perseverance. We grow in self-control. In the mighty name of Jesus. My ye brilliant as Italian as Edelia. In the name of Jesus. My ye zendei keto sianda talia. Le pai pro zianda kelindo sianda taya. Some of us we have not grown in meekness. And the Bible says that it is with meekness. That we receive the engrafted word of God. So if you don't grow in meekness. How do you continue to, 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 to get that word that, we, that is able to save your soul? Lord, I grow in meekness. I am meek in the name of Jesus to always receive your word. Even today, in the name of Jesus, I grow in meekness in the name of Jesus to receive that word that is able to save my soul. In the mighty name of Jesus, that meekness to be able to walk with you. In the mighty name of God demands a higher level of meekness of each of these fruits. In the name of Jesus, my ye brelendo setalia as we walk with him. In the name of Jesus, mazikata paria balendo rike isi and asatonia. It is called higher ground for a reason. It means the higher you go. It is still a ground. There is more, there is more room to still go higher. That is why it is higher ground. It's the higher you go, there's no eye. How high you go, it is still a ground. There is still room to still move forward, to still go higher. Lord, I receive grace to grow in the name of Jesus, to grow my spirit man in love, in joy, in peace, in the name of Jesus. My ye brethren, I receive grace to be skillful, to be more skillful in the word of righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. When Pastor Alex was preaching on Sunday, he said one of the significance of the torn veil is that it is an invitation for prayer. I want us to pray for the spirit of prayer and supplication in this house. In the name of Jesus. That or the Holy Ghost will join our prayer life in the name of Jesus that as many that have been struggling with their prayer life in this house, it is because they have not invited the Holy Ghost into that life, into that prayer life. I want us to pray that Lord, Holy Ghost take over our prayer life in the mighty name of Jesus for we do not know what to pray and how to pray them in the mighty name of Jesus you help our infirmity in the name of Jesus to pray the will of God, to know the will of God in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in this house, intercessors are raised. In the name of Jesus, in this house, prayer, 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 prayer prophets are, 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 are raised for nations in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we ask, oh Lord our God, that you will make us men and women of prayer. In the name of Jesus, Mazika Tapari Ali in the name of Jesus Mazika Tapari Ambalene Leizi and Asusatoli and Brenenosia in the mighty name of Jesus Holy Ghost take over take over our prayer lives in the name of Jesus and make it make it make it potent give power 
to our prayer lives. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of prayer and supplication rest upon us. In the name of Jesus, if you have been struggling with it, it's because you have not invited the Holy Ghost to take over. In the name of Jesus, my Lord, we ask Lord, that you will help us. You will help our prayer lives in this place. In the name of Jesus, that will be men and women of prayers. Regardless of the unit we, come, we, 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 we are, in the name of Jesus, that even as a, as a, as a, as, as a member of the ushering unit, you can lead prayer. In the name of Jesus, prayer will be an integral part of our lives. In the name of Jesus, that is one thing priests do. They pray. In the name of Jesus, I will not be an exception. In the name of Jesus, you will make me a man of prayer. In the name of Jesus, I am a man of prayer. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that when God is looking for a man, he will see men and women in this house. In the name of Jesus, to stake, to stake destiny with, in the mighty name of Jesus, and we will not disappoint the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, that when you are looking for a man, you will see men and women young and old ready to take the burden in the name of Jesus Lord we ask oh Lord that you will help us you will help our prayer lives in the name of Jesus thank you everlasting father we worship you we give you praise we give you honor we give you adoration for in Jesus name we are praying in Jesus name we are praying I want us to pray for our pastor is a is a priest in this house. I want us to pray for him that his head will not lack oil and his garment will remain white in the name of Jesus. That the way he should go, the Lord will always we always guide him in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to begin to pray for him and pray in the spirit concerning him. That in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that when, when, when the shepherd is stricken, the sheep will scatter. I want us to pray for our pastor that Lord, Pastor Lumide, your head will not lack oil in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are the priest over this house. You will not be found wanting in every respect responsibility of a priest in this house in the mighty name of Jesus the Lord is with you the Lord will guide you in the mighty name of Jesus your garment is not stained in the name of Jesus you will present this sheep without without blemish just like Christ we are presenting the bride without blemish in the name of Jesus you will present the sheep the flock of this house without blemish in the name of Jesus Grace is multiplied concerning you in the mighty name of Jesus. My ye prelendosia battalia in the name of Jesus. As you shall be ushering us into dimensions in God. We pray, Lord our God, that you are energized. We pray that you are engraced in the name of Jesus. My ye prelendo setai kasatalia leizianda taparebo rimalembo sianda ketosia. The wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding needed for this walk. I pray in the name of Jesus. It will not be lacking in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus and even in your ministry. In the name of Jesus, the Lord graces your ministry with healing, with deliverance, transformation. In the mighty name of Jesus, the word of faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, the manifestation of the spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that whenever we lift up up, it will be filled in the mighty name of Jesus because there is anointing flowing in the mighty name of Jesus. My in the name of Jesus, that whenever we lift the cup up, it is filled. Because there is anointing in the name of Jesus. There is enablement in the name of Jesus. Malendo sia pasatalia. Lazy and a satolem beeke satuli and a satire. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. I want us to begin to commit today's service into God's hand. That in the name of Jesus. 
as the word of God shall be coming, we receive with meekness in our heart. In the name of Jesus, even this day, the word of God is not only being sent in during the message. Even during worship, the word can come. In the name of Jesus, the Lord positioned me well to meet with you. To visit, to, to receive your visitation. In the mighty name of Jesus, that it, as you shall be encountering each and every one of us, we are ready to receive you. In the mighty name of Jesus, my able see a battalion as in day, that word that is able to change my life. That, is, that word that is able to change the situation, we receive in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your word come. In the name of Jesus, let your word come. In the name of Jesus, every minister that will be using, any vessel you'll be using today, Lord, we pray that they shall be channels of blessing for us. In the name of Jesus, there shall be channels of blessing for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Ebosia Battalion, that's Italia, there shall be communion. There shall be communion. In the name of Jesus, there shall be transformation. In the mighty name of Jesus, there shall be there shall be exchange in the spirit. The Lord will be exchanging uh, His own beauty for our ashes. Uh, in the name of Jesus, the Lord will be en- exchanging. The Bible says that the chastisement of our peace was upon Him. In the mighty name of Jesus, that every troubled heart receive peace. In the name of Jesus, as the word is coming, every troubled heart receive peace. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we invite you. You are. In- in this place, uh, it is your throne in the name of Jesus preside over this meeting Lord Spirit of God preside over this meeting in the name of Jesus and make us n- to be to be different, make us, the Bible says that he has not called the house of Jacob to seek him in vain Lord uh, we have come to seek you we will not seek you in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus, the blessings of seeking diligently will be upon us. We come to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will prepare every heart to seek you this evening. In the name of Jesus, to seek you and find you. In the name of Jesus, as we seek, we seek diligently. We seek diligently. We seek diligently with the all of our heart. In the name of Jesus, we feel our gaze on Jesus. In unto him the author and the finisher of our faith in the mighty name of Jesus. My Ibralianda say to you, Pralianda Zenei Ketosia, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Spirit of God, over, over this place, over, over this place, and, 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 and let the word of God find expression in our lives. In the name of Jesus, let your word find expression in our lives. In the name of Jesus, yes, 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 there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. There will be, there shall be a Possessing of possessions uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Ibrelin Dossi and Natalia, there shall be giving of vision, there shall be giving of vision in the mighty name of Jesus, there shall be establishment, uh, word for establishment uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, word of encouragement uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, everlasting Father, word of strength in the name of Jesus that strengthens our spirit, that energizes our soul in the name of Jesus words that that makes us more than uh, that 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 reminds us that we are more than conqueror it's in the name of Jesus that we are victorious in the name of Jesus even as we are in the world we are not of the world in the name of Jesus but we have overcome the world because he has overcome the world in the mighty name of Jesus thank you everlasting father thank you everlasting father we worship you we give you praise we give you honor we give you adoration for in Jesus name we have prayed. With our hands and continue to worship him. Let's bless his only. My beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands let's sing my my beloved is the most beautiful 
amongst thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands my beloved my beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands oh yes and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands yes you
Yeshua, Yeshu, Yeshua, Mashiach, Yeshua, Mashiach, Yeshua, Mashiach. We call you Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. We are privileged to call Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. We are privileged to call Yeshua. Yeshua, 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 Amashia, Yeshua, 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 Amashia. We are so privileged to go. We go, you Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia, Yeshua, 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 Amashia. We go, you Jesus. We go, you Jesus. We go, we go, we go, you Jesus. Yeshua, 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 Mashiach, Yeshua, 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 Mashiach. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. Oh, and all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. Let's sing your name, your name, your name. Is the highest your name? Is the greatest your name? He stands above them all. Oh, 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 thrones and dominions, oh, powers and positions, your name. He stands above. He stands above them all. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. King of glory, oh pass and dominions, oh pass and positions. Your name he stands above. He stands above them all. Your name, your name. He's the highest, and your name is the greatest. Your name, he stands above. Your thrones and dominions are all powers and positions. Your name, he stands again and again, say your name.
There are kingdoms, there are mountains, and there are thrones. Only Yeshua, only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom, there will be no end. Only Yeshua, only will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end only Yeshua only Yeshua he's the one that will remain kings will come kings will go nations will come nations will go but one king will remain forevermore. One king will reign through generations. One king will reign forever and ever and ever. One king will reign forever. One king will reign forever. The king of kings will reign forever. No matter what happens, he will reign forever. Our king will reign forever. Only Yeshua will reign forever. Let's declare it again and again. Say only Yeshua. Only Yeshua. <laughs> he will reign forever. To his kingdom there will be no To his kingdom, there will be no end. <laughs> oh yes, to his kingdom, there will be no end. There's no beginning to his kingdom, there will not be an end. To his kingdom, there will be no end. Thank you, Jesus. To his kingdom. There'll be no end to his kingdom. There'll be no end. There'll be no end. There'll be no end. <laughs> to his kingdom. There will be no end. There will be no end. There will never be another. <laughs> there will never be another. 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 To his kingdom, there will never be another like his kingdom. <laughs> There's no, no kingdom like his own before he came. And even outside the beginning ends, because he was here at the beginning, he will be here when everything is rounded off. He's the king of glory. To his kingdom, to his kingdom, there will be no end. And you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. And you deserve the glory. Can you lift your hands to him and say, You are worthy of it all, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. You are you alone, you just you alone, numero uno, no other person, just you alone, the one who sits on the throne, the one who will reign forever, the one who will reign forever, the one who will reign forever, you deserve the glory. One more time, said you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, God, you are worthy. was found worthy to open the you scroll except the lamb of god that was slain from the foundation of the world thank you jesus no other person was found worthy thank 
you, Jesus. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. You know what we were praying? The person that led us reminded us that we are priests over our own lives first. Yes, but we are we are priests, but we are priests over our own lives first. And so can we just dedicate our lives again and say, Lord Jesus, let incense arise from my life to you in the morning, in the noontime and at night time, Jesus. Let incense arise. Night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, day and night, day and night. Night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, let it be pleasing unto Jesus. You are worthy of it all. Thank you, Jesus. You are, you are, you are. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you that we can come once again. Lord, as we look into your word, the Bible, we pray that you will open it unto us. You will teach us by your spirit. You will guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. Please be seated. Please let me put on this fan or this one. Thank you, sir. You can put that one on too. Me, I'm just coming in, so I'm sweating. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Our God is a faithful God. How has your week been so far? It will get better and better. And you are going to have marvelous testimonies before this week is over. In the name of Jesus. The veil has been torn. And we, we have access to the almighty God. And in his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Nothing good shall be impossible in your life and mine in the name of Jesus. Luke. Luke chapter 17. We are reading 1 to verse 19. The gospel according to Luke. 17, 1 to 19. So, follow me as I read. Look into your Bible, whether hard copy or electronic copy, or electronic version. Uh, let's read together. So, and at the end, I'm going to ask you, what jumped at you? What is the Spirit of God impressing on your heart? Then he said to the disciples, that's Jesus, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and they were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying I repent, you shall do what? You shall forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, 
if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it will obey you. And which of you having a servant, plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper? And guard yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Verse 11. Now it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go! Show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, We are there not ten cleansed? But we are denying. Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. So, who wants to go first? What jumped at you from those 19 verses? Sister Adaize, looking like a professor. Shall we then give you a microphone? Oh yeah, give her the microphone. Your look is like that of a professor. So you should go first. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The word jumps at me was that verse 17. Verse 17. Okay, so what does it say? When Jesus healed the ten lepers, for those that came, for the particular one that later come back to give thanks to God, mm. it shows that in everything we should give, we should have a, a, a mindset of gratitude to always appreciate everything that comes around you and not just take, take, take without saying thank you. So for him to come back and appreciate God, which means he has done the best he could. And the others, who knows what will happen to them later. Hallelujah. Thank you. Any other one? So that we can move quickly. Yes, Sister Tolu. Just to add to what she said, I mean, if you look at verse 15 in the Amplified, it mm. says, Then one of them, upon seeing that he was killed, turned back, recognizing and thanking and praising God with a loud voice. Mm. You know, the way the Bible describes it is very interesting. Well, in the Amplified version, he says that when he saw that he was killed, I guess that they were probably on, still on their way to the priest. I don't know. But he saw, I mean, uh, he, uh, probably, probably he had it when we got there. But immediately that he saw that he was killed, the Bible says he turned back and rec recognizing and thanking and praising God with a loud voice. You know, your Bible says, Bajen Simi. There's a thank you that is Bajen Simi, meaning that just take and let me rest. Like, you know, the kind of thank you that just shall take it. But there's a thank you that is with a loud voice. There's a thank you that is, is you recognize and you thank and you praise God. I, I believe that the Bible was, you know, in, was saying this to say, there's a way we must thank God. In thank, yes, it's good to thank God, but how do we do the thanking God? Do we do it in recognition of the fact that this is, it is God that has done it? Do we do it consciously? Do we do it, you know, being aware you know, and 
giving him all the praise that he deserves. And the verse says, he glorified God. I praise God with a loud voice. Do we praise God with a loud voice? So we're just, you know, just doing it in such a way that, I mean, we just want to give God something. I, I, I think the lesson for me here is that in thanking God, we must do it consciously. We must do it recognizing that he is the one that is the source. And we must do it with a loud voice. So, I mean, it might not necessarily be that you should shout. But, you know, just recognizing and acknowledging and thanking God well. In such a way that, I mean, he will really, really, um, 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 you know, be glorified. And as, I, as I'm saying, I'm remembering the way when you go for parties in Yoruba land, for example. When they start praising. I mean, in Yoruba land, before the king comes out. There's somebody, I forgot the name, the name they call the guy. I don't know if they still do it now. But the guy will come and be calling the praises of the king before the king comes out. And you know when the king comes out, in fact, his head has, is, I mean, even if he was feeling bad or sad before, he's already, you know, feeling like, eh, hey. he enters into that place of a king. That is mere man. How much more God Almighty. May the Lord help us to, you know, truly and really praise God in such a way that indeed, you know, he's to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Ify, it's only the women that are talking tonight. Where are the men? Ah, okay. Praise the Lord. God's will. Yeah, where actually jumped at me also is within that 17, 18, and 19. Mm. He said then, he said to him, oh, sorry. Verse 17, Jesus asked were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Looking at that scripture, ten were, were healed, so to speak. Mm. Only one came to give thanks. And out of that one that actually came to give thanks is not even the core person. He's a total foreigner. The Bible says he's a Samaritan. So let's assume he's, he's actually a Muslim among Christians. They were cleansed. It was the Muslim that came back to say thank you Lord. So the lesson for me here is a lot of times people come to testify of healing. And afterwards, you see that the same ailment came back to them sometimes. Could it be that they could not totally give thanks to God that made the ailment come back? Because it's only one person that was made well. They were here, they're quite all right. But when Jesus was done with that one man, the Bible said he was well. That means... That amen had no chance of coming back to him. That leprosy, because Jesus had pronounced him well. So it's a great lesson for us. The man came shouting, thanking God from the depth of his heart because he was so grateful. He said when he saw what God did, he could not hold himself. So it's a call for us to really appreciate God from the depth of our hearts. Christians, we take a lot of things for granted. When God does, uh, maybe does a miracle for you or for me, it's so easy to say it's God, it's, it's his job to do it. But this man saw what God did and he couldn't hold it. So it's a lesson that we should learn. It is not it is not, we shouldn't take anything God does for us for granted. That is just a lesson I got there. Praise the Lord. Um, what actually jumped at me was from verse 11, where it all started. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible said, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Now verse 12 said something. And he entered into a certain village. There he met there met him ten men that were lepers. Now he said which stood afar off. That means they were not close to him according to what the scripture said. Now 13 said and they lifted up their voices 
This too shows that they were not close to him. They were still afar. And said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, 14 said, and when he saw them, that means his attention was called. He said unto them, go shew thyself unto the priest. Jesus did not even pronounce healing upon them immediately. He said, go shew yourself unto the priest. Now, and these were Samaritans. Like she said, Samaritans were just like ascribed to like Muslims or so. It's like you asking a Muslim, go and show yourself to the pastor. I don't know if we are getting this scenario. Jesus said to them, that like, I'm calling to you, come and heal me. And the next thing you tell me is that I should go and show myself unto the, the priest. Which at that time, it does not make sense. Be, because normally, if, if you're a leper, at that moment, you're pronounced unclean. And then the priest should not have anything to do with what is unclean. But now Jesus telling them at that point in time, saying, go and show yourself unto, like the, the answer at that point in time was something we should actually think about. It's not even, it's not even in correlation with the prayer points. It's not even in correlation with the demand. He said, go and show yourself unto the priest. But now the Bible did not tell us how long it took for them to do that. Now, he said, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. That means the, the cleansing did not even take place immediately. They were on their way before the cleansing took place. That means in their heart of hearts, they already knew that they are not supposed to see the priest. But then, because Jesus said so, they decided to do what? They decided to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, before the faith, the, the, the faith came... You know, the healing came out of the obedience because every one of them obeyed. It didn't make sense because that's where the faith comes in. The, it didn't make sense at that point in time because you're asking me to go and see the priest. I don't know, it is still touching my head up to now. Like, I'm asking you that I'm, I'm sick. You're telling me to go and see the priest. Like a Muslim, asking, you're telling a Muslim to go and see a pastor. Not even a man, just say go and see the what? The pastor. And they know that they are not supposed to see the pastor. But still yet, because of Jesus said so, they obeyed. And in that obedience, their healing was granted. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Maureen, do you want to say something? Are you raising up your hand? Okay. Please give, him, give your neighbor. Give your neighbor. Okay. okay. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, I pinned down some things here. Um, like you said, faith requires action. It's more of... When it comes to miracles, I don't think we need to think it. Because, like you said, it doesn't make any sense that go and show yourself to, to this person. And it's like, why? And then another thing I wrote here is, blessings can be overlooked. Um, like we said, it's just one person that came to come and say thank you. It's easy for us to overlook blessings. Oh, it has happened. We are looking, at, we are looking for like the bigger miracle to actually happen. Meanwhile, you're not even thankful for, this, for like regular things that we consider regular that God does for us. So those are like the points that I highlighted. Okay. Um, he actually had said uh, virtually everything I wanted to say. But then I'll look at um, verse 1 of that same chapter that deals with offenses. Um, I will draw my analogy from Pastor's message on Saturday that says uh, offenses will come, but when it comes, we should not bear grudges. We should be able to um, let it go and uh, be able to forgive one another. In fact, my, one of my sons came home and said, Mommy, I, I think he did something. So I wanted to scold him and he said, Mommy, you're looking so angry. You're talking so angrily. And I said, why wouldn't I be angry? But he said, he then told me what the senior pastor said. So that when somebody, well, that we should learn to, to, to shelve offenses, we shouldn't hold on to offenses that when it comes we should learn to forgive easily and let it go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Adam Faith. In fact, I wanted to talk about faith. <laughs> we, are, we are in faith, so we can see. So I looked at um, verse 7. Okay. 
Just like Brother Gospel says, sometimes the things of God does not look like he's sensible at all, but, it's, but it makes a lot of sense. He says, when a servant comes in from plowing or taking care of the sheep, does his master say, come in and eat with me? Of course not. Rather, he will tell him, go and prepare my meal for me, put an apron and make sure that I eat. So sometimes, when we do things for God, we are always expecting him to tell us, well done. But if he doesn't tell us, well done, the Bible says, it is our duty. So I think here he's teaching us pride. We shouldn't be proud. Or when you think, I've arrived. We haven't arrived. We are only doing our duty as a child of God when we do think, things that we're supposed to do. That's what jumped at me here. All right, Ma. Thank you, everyone. I want to talk to us this evening about um, gratitude. Cultivating the attitude of gratitude. Being thankful. And just this um, morning, I discovered that um, thankfulness is a part of gratitude. That gratitude is deeper than being thankful. And I will read the quote that I saw this morning because I wrote about um, the spirit of ingratitude that seems to be at work in many Nigerians. I'm going to be dwelling more on the story of the ten lepers. Jesus Christ was going to Jerusalem and he got to a certain town. The name of the town is not mentioned. And there were ten lepers there. And like Bro God's will said, they must have been afar off because, because generally, if you are a leper, you are not supposed to be found within the city. You are supposed to be living on the outskirts, in the bush. That's why we have what they call leprosarium today. A leprosarium is a place, a community created for lepers so that they will not infect other people. Other people will not be infected by leprosy. So, they stood afar off. They probably were on the outskirts. Jesus Christ was passing by. And they must have heard, this man is a worker of miracles. This man heals people. So they began to shout, Jesus, have mercy on us. And Jesus, ever so compassionate, he stopped and he attended to them. It's very funny what he said. He didn't say be healed. He didn't even ask them, what do you want me to do for you? Like we have seen him ask, like we have seen him do in some other places. He just said, go and show yourselves to the priest. That was a very difficult thing he asked them to do. Priest, the priests, they do not see, they are, their eyes are like God. That cannot be old iniquity. They can't be old leprosy. But he said, go and show yourselves to the priest. Jesus Christ was teaching them, one, obedience. He was teaching them faith. Let me see whether they will obey my instruction. You want to be healed, Abby? But let's see whether you obey instructions. And they just turned and they started going to see the priest. The Bible says as they went, they discovered that they were cleansed. They checked themselves. Ah, this thing don't go. One turned back to come and say, Jesus, thank you. He was thanking God as he approached Jesus. And Jesus said, Ewa, how many people were healed? Ten. How come only this foreigner returned? I don't think they were all Samaritans. I believe that one because from the little English I understand, let's read it. He said, except this foreigner. So others were likely to have been Jews like him. Except this foreigner, then 
That foreigner was later qualified and he was a Samaritan. So the others were likely Jews, like Jesus. Samaritans were not considered Jews. They were considered as adulterated Jews. Jews with impurities. They were a mixed blood. They were not pure Jews. The Jews didn't reckon with them. That's why when Jesus, in John chapter 4, when he was by the well of Jacob, and that Samaritan woman came, she was surprised that Jesus was even talking with her. So, this leper returned to give thanks. One out of ten. One out of ten. One over ten, is that pass mark? Big time failure. Unfortunately, in life, even as I'm talking to you, the ratio most of the time of those who do good to those who do evil, the ratio most of the time of those who are thankful for what they have received to those who are ungrateful is usually one out of ten. Research it. You will find it to be true. I have a book in my house called, in fact, I have two in my library now because somebody else gave us another one when we started the wonderful library of Just Jesus Foundation. Finishing Strong by Steve Farah. How many of you have read that book before? Finishing Strong by Steve Farah. Was that not the ratio he gave? One out of every ten men that start out to serve God to say, oh, I will do this for God. I will do that for God. One out of every ten, finish strong. Finish well. Accomplish the reason for which they set out. One out of every ten. That was where he gave the example of Billy Graham. Chalk, um, something chalk. Out of about ten, twelve of them, or 20 of them that started out as young men, evangelists. In fact, when they started out, the other two, Chalk and the other person, they were the front runners. They were the ones that people looked up to. Billy Graham was not as popular. He was nowhere near those other two. But after about uh, maybe some 10 to 15 years, the other two had fallen by the wayside. It was only Billy Graham that went ahead. To make a full proof of his ministry. One out of every ten. And as I wrote this morning, and I just sent it out this evening. If this was not important, Jesus Christ would not have mentioned it. When we first married, my wife and I, we used to have issues concerning this matter. My wife grew up in a very, very liberal home. You know, she's Nee Williams. I won't know boy anymore. Quite liberal. My wife didn't see any need in. Okay, so you did this for me yesterday. I've said thank you yesterday. Why should I wake up this morning again to say thank you? I say, ah, in Yoruba land, they say, so it was always like an issue. What's the big deal there? So when we started having children, and I was trying to inculcate that into them, later on in our bedroom, you say, look, my stress and one more day. This, they have said thank you for that shirt you bought them yesterday. They said thank you for that shoe you bought them yesterday. I said they should wake up this morning and say, Daddy, thank you for yesterday. Let me tell you something. I learned that growing up. In the James Holland Rewaju I know family. That's my dad. And it has served me very well. And it continues to serve me a lot. Excuse me. Learn to be profusely thankful. Learn to be what? Profusely thankful. Some of you people have helped you in the past. Your gratitude towards them. And I'm going to read that quote that I said I saw this morning. Very powerful. 
your gratitude towards them or lack of it is the reason why they have continued or they have stopped helping you. Your gratitude. Two things I discovered about thankfulness and about good works. You see, when men of God, and I know that some of them, they've overdone it. But there is truth in you giving to your pastors. You giving to people who bless you. There is a lot of blessing in it. I believe in it. I do it. I discovered that when I came into certain leadership roles also, particularly with my writing, and people began to send blessings my way. People would say, ah, Brother Le, how do you fund this, your writing? How do you keep it up? And all these charities that you do, send me your bank details. As people credit my account, this is what I discovered. I discovered that when I'm praying, I remember their names more than the general people that are family members, that are friends, that are relations. So I told myself, oh, so when I give to men of God, it's very likely that they will remember me more when they are praying. That's just the truth. Jesus Christ would leave that certain town, village, that the name was not mentioned, remembering more that one leper that came to give thanks. And the Bible says, he said to him, go your way, your faith has done what? He has made you well. Another translation says, it has made you whole. Being whole is different from being healed. The others could have been healed. Their leprosy stopped. They were cleansed of leprosy. But if you know leprosy, leprosy eats people's fingers. It destroys people's limbs. So the leprosy stopped. But this one that was made whole, it's very likely the fingers were restored. They grew out again. That's what gratitude will do for you. Gratitude will keep good things coming to you. Gratitude will keep you growing. Gratitude. gratitude. If you struggle with tithes and offering, it's because you are not grateful to God. It's because you are not grateful. If you are grateful, nobody will preach to you to give tithes. Now let me teach you. If you didn't know, tithe is 10% of 100% that you have received. Where did you receive it? If you know and I think Sister Tolu said it as she was rounding up. Or maybe somebody. Somebody talked about God being the source. Being our source. I don't remember who said it. But I know somebody said it this evening. I say that in my prayers a lot. God, Father, we thank you for you, our source, our strength, and our sustainer. If you realize that God is your source. And he gave you the entire hundred. To return 10 out of 100 will not be a big deal for you. That 10% is you coming to say, Ah, Baba, a she, a she. In fact, if you are very grateful, you can go beyond 10% and say, Lord, ah, ah, I want to do 15. I want to do 20. If you are really grateful, We started a foundation recently to take care of the feeding outreach to the mentally challenged on the streets of Ibadan. And then to start doing students outreach so that we can educate them to stay clear of drug addiction and anything that can bring them emotional turmoil. And I wrote about it. And I sent out, you know, special messages to some very good friends. Many of them are abroad. People who have believed in my ministry since 1995. And as people began to credit our account, the account dedicated to it, I will send them a powerful thank you message acknowledging their donation. Then I have a young lady that I employed who is in the office. We have an office in Ibadan. Who 
who is in the office, I composed another message different from the one I sent. I sent it to her. And I put her name there as our front desk and relationship officer. And I, will be sen I send her all the names and the telephone numbers of the people who sent in one thing or the other. And I will say, send them this thank you message. So they receive message from me. They receive message from Bro, they lay, ah, ah. What I'm doing is to keep us in their mind and in their memory. There's a young man I know. He's actually my cousin. But he likes to do things in a very, very covert manner. He doesn't want you to know that he's the one doing it. If you read me well, last week, Friday or so, I wrote. I said, it was a, I sent it to everybody. I said, if you were the one that sent me money on this particular day, can you please let me know? That was when I wrote about Patrick Obaye Agmon. I said, do these two things for me. Do you remember? Did anybody? Apart from my wife, my family, and um, a sister that came to me after the program we had in church, Mokola on Saturday. This is the only other place where I'm saying it. I got an alert of half a million for the foundation in the 500,000. That's the highest I've received. There have been many close to that, but that's the highest. And he didn't put his name there. He was just he just put for the foundation under information. And I was like, ah, I need to know who sent this money. I have to thank the person. So that was why I sent out that general message. Nobody responded. So I sat down. Who do I know? In my family, my very close friends, my associates that can send me this kind of money. So I narrowed it down to five people. So I sent them a message. Hey, but boy, did you send me money? I didn't even put the figure there. So later, later in the day, he sent me a message. He said, I sent you 500K. Now, this same person, last year March, I wrote about um, Capro wanting to send two missionaries to Oman. Two young men that were not married. They were going to sow their lives as a seed to the Lord. They could go to Oman and be killed there. I wrote about it because I support Capro. I love Capro. <laughs> a young lady sent in a millionaire to the account of Capro for those two men. The lady didn't put her name there. Later on, I found out who the lady is. She's a young girl, somebody I would never, I didn't even know she had money like that. But you see, when you are thankful for little, little things, these are people who read me, who support me over the years. If I say I have anything, if I say I'm raising money for somebody's hospital bill, these are people who may have chipped in 5,000, 10,000, but I, oh, thank you. Acknowledge it. You don't know that such a person can do one million. Be thankful. People send me recharge cards, 100 naira, 200 naira. Some other people send me recharge cards of 5,000, 2,000 naira. Everyone, whether 100 naira, 200, I thank them profusely. And I've written before, don't just say thank you with mouth. Document your gratitude. What people hear, they forget easily. But what you have documented, they will be reading it on their phone. I started my writing ministry by sending out text messages. 160 character. People tell me, in fact, some people show me messages on their phone. SMSs in those days. Two, three, four years old. They will say, Brother Lee, I don't delete your text messages. So document your gratitude. The more they see it, ah, ah, this brother that is doing this thing, ah, that sister that is doing that thing. When was the last time I sent him money? But if it's just thank you by word, they have forgotten it. They have forgotten it. Then one thing I also do, which many ministries do, which many NGOs do. 
they buy gifts and customize it and send it to their regular donors. I buy things. I give to people who donate to my cause. I give to people generally, but I give more to those who have been good towards me. Like I told you, those who give to you, you remember them more. They are more in your subconscious than those who just take from you. Jesus Christ referred to that man. Were there not ten? How come? Only this one returned to give thanks. When people give you lift, do you remember to say thank you? People that you know, that you have their telephone number, do you remember to say thank you? Somebody gave you clothes. Somebody gave you money. In today's Nigeria, as they say in Tinubu's economy, you don't say thank you. Even if they are millionaires, what they gave you, they could have given somebody else. But in saying thank you, in saying thank you, they will remember you even more. There is this generous spirit of ingratitude, unthankfulness in the atmosphere. Don't be caught in it. Don't be caught in it. And I will show you from the Bible. The Bible says, in days like this, perilous times, as we approach the end, he said, that spirit of unthankfulness will be prevalent in the world. I see it at work in many people's lives. They just take things for granted. Somebody has done something for you. You can't say thank you. You just take it. Eh? Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy. I'm teaching you things that have worked for me that continue to work for me. Second Timothy chapter three. I read one to five. Are we all there? Second Timothy three. 1 to 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. These are the signs that perilous times are here, that we are in the last days. Men will be lovers of themselves. Pastor said it on Sunday, or was it Saturday night? So because it rained, you can't come to church. Lover of yourself. But if they say, come to American embassy for American visa, it doesn't matter. Even if there is fire on the road, you will get there. It's because you love yourself. You don't love God. If you love God, the rain will not stop you. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves. They will be boasters. I did it by my power. They will be proud. It amazes me when Christians, when, when a Christian says, I can't wear that. That's beneath me. I can't use that. My class is higher than that. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Important people are in the mortuary. So if you are important, you are going to the mortuary very soon. But if you are humble, you will stay. You will live longer on this earth. Who are you? But for grace, you are not better off than those beggars on the streets to you. You are not. You are not. None of us is. But for grace. Did you determine where you were born? How you were born? To whom you were born? Did you? No, you didn't. So it's the goodness of God that has made you to be where you are. The goodness of God. There is nothing I cannot use as long as it is not torn and it is neat. Nothing. I've said it before. I've said it here. But I don't do class. There is nothing any one of you has that thrills me. Nothing. Nothing. It's just by the grace and the goodness of God. As Christians, we should live like Jesus Christ. 
He was rich. He created everything. But he chose to live like a poor person. So that you and I, we can enjoy his riches. So if we enjoy his riches, why should you live as if you made it happen for yourself? As if you are somebody. None of us is anything. Like pastor said on Sunday. None of We are nothing. None of us is anything. All of us are who we are by the grace of God. If you know that, it will make you humble. It will make you humble. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and the next one, unthankful. Unthankfulness is one of the signs of the end times. Unthankful. Don't be unthankful. I believe I've said it here before. Pastor Alex did something for me and my wife. About four years ago, about four years ago, our house in Ibadan was robbed. We went to church on a Sunday, broad daylight, around 12 noon. We got back home. They had boggled our house. Took my laptop, took my wife's laptop. We left two, three phones at home. They took everything. My one terabyte storage device, they took it. And some other things like that. So, Pastor Alex got to know. And... Um, he bought my wife a phone. My wife works in the church office. She was one of their staff then. She's still working there. Bought my wife a phone that was more expensive than the one that they stole. And I was like, ah, is she going to sell? So we said thank you. I documented this, said thank you to him. We saw later in the evening. I said thank you. I saw him again. Thank you, sir. Pastor Alex told me, he said, I want a gentleman, so thank you, Ben. I want a gentleman. <laughs> You know, we laughed about it. He said, it's witches that thank people profusely like that. We laughed. But do you, he won't forget it. Pastor has since done many other things for me. Pastor Alex. Pastor was in Germany last year. Or was it two years ago? I said, Pastor, buy me a t-shirt. Oh. Buy me a t-shirt. I said, Adidas. Adidas is cheap in Germany. He said, seriously? He bought me an Adidas. There are people who have been in that church for 31 years. They can't ask him for things like that. You know why I could ask? Why I could do that? One, relationship. And then two, I've shown gratitude for things he has done for me. The blender we use in our house now, a big blender. It came in a big hamper that Pastor Alex gave me, December of 2019. The biggest hamper I've ever received in my life. It took two people to carry it to my car. December 2019, Pastor Alex gave it to me. Gratitude will keep good things coming your way. Gratitude. I'm telling you, this thing works for me big time. Big time. I will thank you. Anything you do, I will thank you. Ah, she she Thank you. But you, you just what is it? What did you give yourself? Thank them for that small thing they have given you. That small thing, it could be a test. Somebody wants to give you a car. He first gives you a tire. Oh, the way. Tire. Shake my tire. You know? But if you thank him for the tire, you will get the car later on. Be thankful. The Bible says in the last days, people will be unthankful. When I read that place many years ago, ah, I said, no, this won't be me. I've taught this to my family members. When you are unthankful, you are exhibiting the sign, one of the signs of the last days. Be thankful. In closing, let me read that quote to you. Let me read that quote to you. Hmm. I wrote in the words of David O. McKay, this is what he said. Gratitude is deeper than thanks. You, you have not even begun to thank God. He says, gratitude is deeper than thanks. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Thankfulness is what? Is the beginning 
of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Thankfulness. Oh, I say thank you. Those are words. If you are truly grateful, you will go beyond mere words. Like Sister Tolu said, and it's true. There are all kinds of the same thing for thankfulness. You can just say, it can just be mere words. But if you are truly grateful, it will show in your actions. The man said it. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. Gratitude is shown in acts. Your actions will show whether you are truly grateful or not. That's what happened with that one leper. That's what happened. He came back to say thank you, to worship, to roll before Jesus Christ. Your actions they speak louder than your words. Jimmy Cliff sang, Action Speaks Louder Than Words. One of those songs. Be grateful. Be grateful. I live with my elder brother. My immediate elder brother. Naid and born. Come born me. The Yorubas will say, <laughs> I live with him. He's my elder brother. Every time I travel to Ibadan and I get home, I will send him a message. I'm safely at home. Thank you for everything. Myself and my elder brother, there are three years between us, but we are on first names. We talk as parties. We are not even so close nowadays like we used to be before I got born again. We are very close. But I'm a Christian. We are still believing God for his own salvation. So, and, you know, but we are still charming. Every time, I will say thank you for everything. I know they buy food for Lagos. Now in food that they chop, free food. I'm not poor. I can afford to buy my food. I use free Wi-Fi. Hmm? Everything free. I could take it for granted. Yeah, this is my brother, now. Nah. My brother, wait thing. What thing you do? No. There are brothers who are not like my brother. Yeah. You can't come anywhere near them. You can't enjoy anything they have. So that I have a brother that can accommodate me. One time I brought food. When I first started, you know, coming over. I brought food. Somebody actually brought me provision. One of my mentees. Brought me provision. Milo, uh, milk, and some other things. And I dropped them in his kitchen. When he came back, I told him, you know, he doesn't want me to spend my money on anything. He sees himself as a bon, and I'm your host. Yeah. Sometimes I drive his car. You know, so, but I don't take it for granted. If he sends anything, he has given my children phones. He has given me phone before he works with MTN. Give him, when he sends anything to my children, not only do I say thank you, when I deliver it to them, Oh yeah. Either call him or you send a thank you message. Stop taking the goodness of God for granted. Stop taking the goodness of God's people towards you for granted. Let's be on our feet. The Bible says, and be ye thankful. Be thankful. Excuse me. Watch it from today. Start deliberately thanking people. Even when people greet you, ah, thank you for greeting me. Because there are many people who, who do not, who will not look at your side. They don't even know that you live on the same street. Be thankful. Be thankful. I want us to begin to pray, Lord, help me to be a thankful person. Help me to be grateful. 
Help me to see the good that you are doing in my life. Help me to appreciate the good people you have surrounded me with. That's a prayer we often say in my family. When we thank God for everything, for protection, for food, for provision, we thank him for good friends that he has. Oh, God has given me good friends. He has given my family good friends, good people. Oh, God has given us good. We thank him for good people. When I enter my office in the morning, I thank God for bringing me there safely. I thank God for the friend that God used to open that door for me. I thank him. I thank him. Be thankful. Pray, God, give me the grace to be grateful. Give me the attitude of gratitude. Help me, Lord, to stop taking things for granted, however little they may be. Let's be thankful. Your thankfulness towards God will show in the way you give to God. It will show in your tithes and in your offering. Nobody has to preach it to you. Thank God you have teachers who are even mentioning it. But when you are grateful, and you realize that God gave me the hundred. What is ten? That they have to be begging me for it. We don't give to God because he's asking us to. We give to him because we love him. And because we appreciate that is our source and our strength and our sustainer. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for healing us of all our diseases. Thank you for redeeming our lives from destruction. Thank you for having forgiven us all our iniquities. Thank you for daily crowning us with your loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you, Father. For satisfying our mouths with good things. So that our youth is renewed like the good. Like the eagles. Thank you for this assembly. Thank you for planting our feet here. Thank you for making us fruitful. Every day. Thank you for blessing us. Lord we thank you for Nigeria. In the midst of this hardship. You keep making a way for us. Thank you. We give you praise. And we give you glory. Let the spirit of gratitude. Continue with us. Be with us now and forevermore in Jesus name. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I hope we have been blessed by that message. Ah. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want this message to just go like that. So I, I want to give you an example. How many of you know Pastor Femi Oderilo? He was just preaching like this in Agidingbi. And he said, ever since he was employed, I think he has been employed for over 20 years. He said that for every month that he collects his salary, he says thank you to the employer. So I, you know, just like he preached now, I just took it. So, you know, since I started working again in, in an office, I said I'm going to start trying this thing. And ever since now, up to about five months, every time I get an alert, I say to my MD, thank you for the salary of this month. Every month. So it is not something impossible. I want you to take it upon yourself to start doing something now. Even if it means to your parents. You know, some of us, we have even forgotten our parents. Some of our parents suffered so much. Suffered so much. Suffered so much. <laughs> I remember, I think my, my dad's sister will remove our own, what they call, hero to sow something for my dad so that my dad could go to school. You know. So let's, let's be grateful. Let's, let's, start, let's put it in practice. Don't leave this evening without deciding what you are going to be thankful for. I remember when I was in the expression, I, was, I asked them, I asked every one of us, including myself, I did it. Right? Maybe we will do it before the end of this year. 100 things that you are thankful for. Hundred things, 
And some people didn't do anything. Some people wrote less than 100. Some people made sure they did 100. The art of gratitude. A lot of things. You are, you are complaining. But there's somebody hoping that one third of where, where you are, the person will be there. The person just praying, just believing, just hoping that. It will, but you, you are complaining. Do you know how God will look at you? Just say, look at hey, This is what you want to use to pay me back. Complaints. Don't let us be beclouded by all the events. There's always something to be thankful for. If you don't have legs, when you see that you have hands and you are seeing somebody who doesn't have legs and hands, you will see reason to thank God. So it's something that we must give ourselves. I want you to practice it. I want to. I just gave you my own example. I mean, I worked somewhere for over twelve years. I never. <laughs> I know. But somebody thought in church. I said, "Let me put this in practice," and I'm doing it now. And I cannot but think and imagine that I will get an alert and I will not say thank you. I don't even know. I don't know what reward is coming. No, <laughs> but I've been doing it. Attitude of. Do you know that sometimes you just wake up. I used to em em emphasize this to my children. You wake up and then the first thing you want to go and do is something else. You can't, you can't even say, Baba, ah, I slept oh, and I'm awake this morning. Thank no, it's not too difficult now. Don't, God, thank you for waking me up. Let's rise up to our feet. I pray that these things that we have heard will not, me, I don't want to be preaching about tithes. So he has mentioned it maybe once in a year. But tithe is an attitude of gratitude. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Oh, sorry, let me take the announcement. So, um, how many of you were around during the convention in Agidimbi? How many of you have recovered from that message? You have recovered. Me, I have not recovered. <laughs> it, was, it was a very good time. So, um, our Tuesday services hold 6 p.m. On Sunday, 8.30 for discipleship class. Our, there will be an all-night this month. I think I'm the one taking the all-night in Agidimbi. All right, and then um, that's the last Friday of the month, and then the first Saturday of of November, we would have our encounter. Hour. I pray that the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, God, for the privilege to have come and to have listened to your message tonight, taught, teaching us about attitude of gratitude. Father, we pray that our lives would use out gratitude to you all the time in the mighty name of Jesus. Will not be like those nine lepers. Lord, we we are committing ourselves to this that in this assembly will be people who are full of gratitude in the mighty name of Jesus. Help our faith, give us strength and grace and courage to live a life of gratitude in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as a sign of gratitude, we have brought our offering, and we ask oh God that Lord, you will accept this offering in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that it will be used for the furtherance of your work in this assembly and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go back home, your presence will not leave us. We'll continue to experience more and more of your goodness and your glory will surround us in every area of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord.